of the organizers of this event. Today, we commemorate the 25th anniversary of Operation Spectrum, mounted by the government on 21st May 1987, against a group of alleged Marxist conspirators. Eventually, 22 people were arrested and detained for varying periods of up to three years. We have published books that detail the hollowness of the government's charges, and these are available here today at the back. We welcome you, if you have not done so, to tour the exhibition later. And now we have a lineup of speakers whom I emphasize will each speak in his or her personal capacity. When you carry a label without having even an opportunity to prove that you really deserve such labeling at the highest in the land, and that is the government. If they were subversive, then we must be clear, really, as the population, yes, they are subversive elements. Instead, what we have is a huge uncertainty. Even today, 25 years on, I think most of us have big question marks over this whole period in our Singapore history. The cases against them have never been clear. So we believe, so we are just told to just believe the government, which honestly is really asking too much of any population. None of us can really have the opportunity to draw any satisfaction from attending a court trial and judging as individuals where all of them, where their true allegiance lay. We just have to believe what the government has told us. The thing now is this, she went on to update the history of Singapore and she said, and she called it a modern, a history of modern Singapore, 1819 to 2005. And on page 338 to page 339 of that particular book, she looked at the Marxist conspiracy, discussed it, dissected it and came to the conclusion the so-called Marxist conspiracy is a myth. It's found on page 239 of her book, A History of Modern Singapore. One case that has come to the attention of Amnesty International is that of Chai Chong. During his interrogation at Whitley Road Holding Centre, Chai Chong was tortured by electric shock treatment as well as beaten several times. On other occasions, he had filthy rags forced into his mouth and red ants placed on his mattress. In recent years, electric shock treatment has also been employed to torture female detainees. Wang Kui In was arrested in July 1976. During her interrogation, she was subjected to torture with electric shocks and the repeated pouring of cold water over her body. Her husband, Pang Hee Fat was also arrested in July 1976. During his interrogation, Wang Kui In was brought in to see him and he was beaten in front of her. But the threat was real. I remember the Foreign Minister, Mr. S. Rajaratnam, complaining that over 200 organizations from around the world had sent protest letters to the government indicating that they do not believe that there is an internal commu communist threat in Singapore. It did not matter that a statement from Lawyers Rights Watch Canada stated that some of the conspirators did not even know each other prior to the arrest or that the only opposition member of parliament at that time, Mr. Chiang Si Tong, had called them innocent young idealists. I don't think it's just about amending or abolishing the ISA. Ultimately, the ISA is but a tool. As with any tool, we also need to consider he who wields the tool we need to consider the entire system under which we operate. So, under the present system, how is the use of powers 
checked and balanced. Who checks and balances powers? Who can we rely on for protection against the unjust use of powers? 新加坡需要内安法令来对付恐怖分子迫害工具 This is not about a personal battle. The struggle for democracy is much more than personal battles. I don't feel bitter towards anyone. Democracy is not about violence. They can jail me, but how are they going to jail democracy? One day, I'll get there. We'll all get there. Mr. Chia's diary. In Mr. Chia's diary, there are no public holidays. Mr. Chia had been on holiday for 32 years. At least that was the version recommended to those who were too young to know better. Around six weeks ago, Malaysia repealed its own ISA, replacing it with an anti-terrorism law that limits preventive detention to 28 days. Yet, the Singapore government continues to insist that it needs the ISA in its current form and that a specific anti-terrorism law would not work or would not be enough or would take too long to implement. The government continues to make these bold assertions without any real explanation or justification. I can only say in response, Malaysia Bode. As many of you know, Marua is also calling for an independent commission of inquiry into the 1987 detentions. We are asking Singaporeans to sign a petition in support of this call. Look around you today. Today, we see so many of the so-called Marxist conspirators standing together again in public. This is Singaporeans' chance to find out the truth for themselves. Look at the ex-detainees. Go up to them. Talk to them. Look into their eyes. Listen to what they have to say. But most importantly, listen to how they say it. And then ask yourself, could these allegations really be true? Could they really have been subversive? Could they really have plotted to overthrow the government? Could there really have been a Marxist conspiracy or any conspiracy at all? And if the answers to these questions are no, then what could have been the justification for the detentions?